everybody. It's Tyler here at the Indiana District Championships, checking in team number 5010, Tiger Dynasty. It's been having an absolutely phenomenal year so far. I love Tiger Dynasty and everything they have bring. Very thrifty, by the way, as we go through on this robot. Uh, coming in all the way from their amazing shag bumpers uh, to their overall aesthetic design, but very functional as well, too. We'll be talking about their intake. I really like their elevator design. We'll be talking about some cool things with programming as well, too, including their path planner modes and more that they're doing in regards to feedback. Let's talk more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. If you're attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Cooper, let's start off talking about your intake here. You got a pretty beefy intake as you go through, so I'd love to hear more about the composition of it and uh, how it's been working out for your team so far. Okay, yeah. So we start off with two Neos that drive some wheels up front to capture our cones and cubes. And then we have two pneumatically um, actuating pistons. And that basically takes it from um, cube mode to cone mode. Do you want to look at that? Yeah. And if you want to see, this is how the wheels help to capture cubes. And then you can outtake them out and shoot them out. And so we had a few different iterations of this plate design. We started off using a quarter inch polycarb. And then as we realized that um, that wouldn't be as strong as we wanted, we moved to heavily trussed quarter inch aluminum. And so here's how it um, intakes cones. Go to cone. So it comes in and hugs the cones and keeps them secured and stops it from going out. So are you mostly then just picking up from the human players in that perspective, or do you also ground pickup? We can do ground pickup, but we're fastest doing from the uh, human player stations, the double. Um, one thing I want to ask on here, you said when you went through iterations, uh, did you have any uh, considerations on like uh, how the grip is or anything like that in regards to like you went pneumatics for it, so what made you choose to go that route in regards to uh, your gripper itself? We wanted to have um, more of a choice. We wanted to own the pieces that we touched. So with this, it can securely hold both the cubes and the cones compactly. Many teams have a very large intake, but ours can stay nice and compact within the elevator. And speaking about the elevator, let's continue on this robot here. I pass over to Jack, who's going to talk more about uh, the elevator. You have uh, many stages that I see, uh, kind of in a couple different directions, too. Uh, it looks like a very thrifty elevator to me. So talk to me more about what's gone into it, Jack, and how it's working out for you. Absolutely. So first of all, I'll talk about our pivot here. So we are just running this. It's just gravity fed downwards, and we have a winch that will pull it upwards. We have down here, we have these cool spools, because in the past we've had issues with our rope not spooling consistently. So we designed basically just a helical groove in a spool. And if you want to go ahead and show it raising and lowering, we can see that. Sank out, go ahead. And so we found that gravity feeding it down was enough. We didn't actually have to power it down. And then some other cool things, we're using these Hall effect sensors to basically track our position with the elevator. So over here we have a magnet on this stage, and that is detected by a Hall effect sensor down there. Uh, and so then that lets us set our positions really accurately. So if we want to go ahead and take a look at our mid position, and then our high position. So that's kind of how that works with our pivot, and we found that it works really nicely. The main change that we've had to make throughout the year is this cross member here. Uh, as we started, we had a lot of problems with it bending and even snapping aluminum, so we finally settled on this box tube, and that's kind of how we run that. As far as our elevator goes, we're running a three-stage elevator. It is uh, rigged cascadingly, uh, so each stage just extends at the same time, if that makes sense, if you want to go ahead and extend it for us. So we have set positions for our elevator, uh, again tracked with Hall effect sensors. And then just talking a little bit more about our elevator, this is actually Rev2. We completely remade it in the past two weeks since our last competition. 
So we are now running it with belts instead of rope for our rigging. And that's just because we find that the belts are a little bit more consistent and they're also easier to work with because they're, they don't stretch the same way as, as our rope did. Uh, on top of that, we have these really nice 3D printed clamps for the belts that sort of just hold onto the tooth profile. Uh, and again, we started out using some very thin tubing for our elevator to save weight, but it ended up being too weak. So on this Rev 2, we just started with 16th wall aluminum, and we actually used our CNC router to take out weight removal spots in it. Uh, on top of that, we have these blocks in the middle of our elevator, which sort of just prevent it from crushing the tubes at all or anything like that happening. Uh, we are running Thrifty elevator blocks, Thrifty bot elevator blocks, so we have a lot of those on here and we've upgraded them to be a bigger bolt going through the bearing just to keep it from bending or anything like that happening. Uh, the one other really cool piece, can we go ahead and see it, can we lower it down a little bit once you retract? Go ahead and lower it down. We have this really neat cable chain at the back because we have to run our wires all the way. So if you want to slowly extend it, Sankalp, uh, you can see it kind of unfurls from the back here and each stage continue, uh, c extends at the same time. And then if you want to retract, it all comes back and it's sort of just nested right back within itself. So that's really neat about this, uh, the way we're running our wires and such. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, you mentioned a little bit more uh, on your pocketing that you did uh, to try to uh, reduce some weight, that sort of thing like that. Uh, but you do extend out really, really far. So when you are uh, either grabbing or placing, is there any other uh, modifications or additions you had to do to try to keep your uh, CG well in balance so you weren't tipping over? Yeah, so our biggest thing was to try and keep weight low here. But additionally, we wanted to make sure that any heavy weight that was in our robot was towards the back. So some things we've done to concentrate that, we have our battery here in the back. We also, we have removed weight from a lot of our tubes that are over here on the sides. But back here at the back, like you were saying, we, we kept them heavy and solid so that we could have a very towards the back center of gravity because as we are extending, you know, it is easy to tip over. So we've tried to position our weight well for that. And Selkup, there's a lot that's gone into this robot from a programming side of things as well too. So I'd love to hear more about uh, what you've been doing uh, from that end. I know we'll be talking about your uh, driver station and uh, you've also been uh, doing an open source for your Swerve drive as we well too. I'd love to hear more about yeah. that. Yeah, so we actually are gonna start with Swerve. So our Swerve is uh, use, using a library called Yaxel. It's, it literally means yet yet another generic Swerve library. It's made by Bronco Bots, I believe. I have forgotten the team mem team number at this point, but it's a really nice open source project, and it's all configured using JSON files. So we can put all of our gear ratios, physical properties, can IDs, all that can code stuff is like built into the stuff, so we don't have to like spend days just configuring all that. It's all ready and ready for us to use. That was the main thing with Swerve. And we're actually big contributors on it. If you go to their GitHub page, you'll actually see our name at the bottom, I believe. It just works. It's just amazing to use, easy to configure, and it got us ready to go for comp. So now I actually want to talk about our auto and stuff. So our auto is, used as our, our auto is made using a thing called Path Planner. Bruh. It's made using Path Planner. And this is another free application that anyone can install. And basically, we can add these markers for our paths. And all of these like little pinpoints are actually like stuff that our robot does. And these are also built into code, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, th these are all the stuff that makes it super easy to compile auto paths and makes it very easy to actually run them and see how it would actually look on the field. You can see here that it does like a wide swing. Oh, oh. Let me do that again, sorry. It actually does like this kind of like wide swing over that wall and then it grabs a cube comes back, same little turn, should score it mid, and lastly, it'll go back and get that cone, right? And one issue we ran into with one of our autos was the 8-1 auto, or as like, uh, 8-1 auto, is that cable tray, it really messes with the swerve drive's odometry. Odometry, it just, it really does not like it, it does not know where it is. So what we had to do is we, we could actually even like control when it slows down. Like in the middle of that path you see here, we have this velocity override. We can actually slow it down in the middle of that so to avoid those uh, odometry issues with the swerve drives. And, it, and we have a decent 8.1 auto now, and it, and it made it really easy to use. And I can explain the numbering system. Those are just April tags, and that's about it. But yeah, that, this is so helpful for path planning this year. And again, you can see the run in the preview. It just moves very nicely. It's very swift, and it looks amazing to look at. Yeah. And it's been obviously working very well on the field. Uh, you know, as we record this, you're part of the number three alliance as well. Had a great performance here at Indiana so far. Uh, 
So, you know, Tiger Dynasty, uh, by the way, I do want to call out, uh, this was a debate on Chief Delphi, but I think your team wins best bumpers. Uh, overall, these are a pretty uh, awesome look for your team. So congratulations on a great season here so far. And, of course, we wish you best of luck here in Indiana DCMP and hopefully even farther on beyond. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.